Hi, and welcome to the Global Travel Planning Podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Collins, who, with my expert guests, will take you on a weekly journey to destinations around the globe, providing travel inspiration, itinerary ideas, practical tips, and more to help you plan your next travel adventure. Welcome to episode eight of the Global Travel Planning Podcast. Today, I'm your guest host instead of Tracy. I'm Karen Bligley from the New Life in Australia podcast. You might recognise my voice from last week's episode. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Tracy all about her upcoming trip. So, hey, Tracy, can you talk to us a little bit about where you're heading next? Yeah, so we were about to head off on a pretty epic trip, actually. It's one of those trips that I've been dreaming of my entire life, I think. Um, And we are heading to quite a number of destinations that neither myself or Doug have been to before um, and I think when, when I got back to the, from the UK in August I kind of sat and went you know what I think the time is now to go and do some of these major destinations which I have just dreamt of doing for such a long time so should I go through each of the destinations Karen? Yeah, please do I'm excited to hear all these places you're going to. Well first of all we are heading to Japan So we're going to be in Japan for three weeks. After Japan, we fly to South Korea. I'm in South Korea for a week. From South Korea, we fly to Vietnam. And we're going to travel through Vietnam for three weeks before arriving into Cambodia. For five days, finally flying into Thailand for a couple of days before we embark on our Um, flight back to the UK so we'll be in the UK from the 11th of December um, for about six weeks or six weeks for Doug but I will be there for eight weeks Um, and then rather than coming straight back I'm actually going to go to India for a month uh, and then Singapore for a few days and then arrive back in back to Australia in the middle of March so it's a pretty epic trip Wow, what a trip. So you're you're away for quite a long time. How long did it take you to plan all of this? I'm still planning it. <laughs> I am still planning it. I spent three days when I was in New Zealand house-sitting in September and I did all the logistics in terms of we already had the flight to Tokyo and I already knew the date that I wanted to arrive back into the UK was the 11th of December at the latest. So I kind of worked around that and figured out, okay, how much time do we want to spend in each of the different countries and which countries did we actually want to go to? So Doug and I had spent a bit of time chatting about that. Um, And when I'd come back, when I came back from the UK, July, I sat and I said, right, there are a certain number of countries that in the next 12 months I really would just like to go and experience. doesn't mean that I'm not going to go back again. I obviously will hope to. But there are just six countries that I really want to just go and see and just look around and experience and inhale, basically. That's just what I want to do. And New Zealand was actually top of the list, which we did last month. I was very lucky to have a fabulous house sit in Christchurch. Um, And then Japan, South Korea. uh, I taught and I worked in Botswana uh, in the 90s and I taught two little girls English. Then they were from South Korea and I met all the family who had moved over from South Korea to Botswana and I have kept in touch throughout the years and the girls actually live in in Sydney in Australia now and I actually flew down to uh, Jimin, the youngest uh, youngest of the girls I taught, who was obviously now uh, in her 30s, I actually flew down to her wedding in in Sydney last September and so when we were deciding on destinations, South Korea had to be done, I had to visit South Korea. And then from then, I guess Vietnam and Cambodia were kind of the obvious next two destinations. And though we've been to Thailand quite a few times before, it was a good um, jumping off place to then fly back to London. So that was that was kind of the first part. And then the UK, because I do, I'm going to be doing a lot of work for my UK travel planning podcast and websites and London travel planner website. So that was kind of a that was an obvious because we want to go and do a whole lot of Christmas stuff. And then after that, we decided. Doug had to come back. He has to come back to Australia. And I was like, no, I'm not done yet. So I'm going to India and I'm going to meet up with a couple of friends in India. I'm actually going to be going and staying with my stepsister-in-law in Bangalore and then flying to meet up with a couple of friends and doing a month. So we're doing two back-to-back intrepid tours around India. 
Wow, it's going to be epic. I know it is. Um, and just to let everybody know, you did a really useful um, interview with me on my podcast all about house sitting as well. And you talked a little bit about your New Zealand house sit there. So I might be able to put a link to that as well, because I think house sitting is a great way to be able to go traveling and not spend money on accommodation as well. Um, Definitely. So what, what's your process look like when it comes to planning? Because I love planning trips. It's just I remember back when I was kind of early 20s late teens I just remember going to on a Sunday afternoon in the UK um, in winter going to like a pub with a log fire and taking your kind of guidebook with you like your rough guide in your lonely planet and getting a hot chocolate and sitting down and with a pen and paper and planning all of these amazing experiences you wanted to have and kind of trying to plot your route out and all of that kind of stuff and I know planning's changed a lot over the years now we've got a lot of online resources and tools and things but how do you plan a trip like that I know you kind of had ideas about where you wanted to go but but about the logistics of it all well, I do also have um, lots of friends who have websites and Facebook groups. So there are destination experts. So I've joined those Facebook groups so to, to chat through and get ideas from from the experts for those various destinations. Um, and then obviously start reading through uh, websites, listening to podcasts, just watching things on television or Netflix that relate to a different country just basically trying to piece together what is it I already know that I want to see and then getting more ideas so I guess when I did this trip we we just decided on the length of time we wanted to spend in each destination and then I booked the flights in between and then from that point it was then starting to look at okay how what is it in particular when we looked at Japan what do we want to see in Japan how are we going to get around Japan so again talking to you know experts about Japan and talking in uh, my friend's Facebook group um, it was a great way to find out this is what I'm proposing what does this sound like does this sound like a good plan so getting some ideas we've got friends who are experts on Vietnam who are in episode four of the global travel and planning podcast so Ros and Allen so we had a good chat with Ros and Allen about visiting Vietnam and they shared a whole lot of tips and ideas and recommendations with us um, I also look on YouTube for videos to get you know put all that together so to me it's the important thing is to have a look get those ideas and then see if I can find the experts who know about those places which is I guess what Doug and I do when it comes to UK travel we help people you know with our itineraries and planning around the UK because we have a vast amount of knowledge and I kind of respect those other people who've done that themselves who know a lot about say Japan or Vietnam or Thailand because they're the people that have got lots more experience than we have and because so many of these places we haven't visited before um, I really needed to get that that expertise and knowledge it really does make a difference when you can can ask questions to people that actually have been and done the things that you're trying to do. Um, so when it comes to packing for all of the different seasons and different countries and different weathers, I know when I've been on a round the world trip, that was always challenging because you'd be going from tropical islands one minute to snow the next minute. Um, how are you planning on packing for the different weather? Well, that's been a bit of a challenge. And if, if anybody's listened to episode five, where I talked to Tess about her four-month trip and she spent time in Japan and then went off to Europe for, she was away for four months with her husband. Um, and we talked about packing and she had, she was very clear about what she was going to pack and how she packed. And she she was really good in that she didn't take anything she was particularly attached to so that she could, you know, leave it or get rid of it along the way. Um, I'm not as good as that. I wish I was. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to be better with my packing. I don't know if this is a good thing, getting those packing cubes that you can take the air out, what you call compression packing cubes, because they just tempt me to put more in. And <laughs> so oh, for this trip, I'm I'm aware that I do actually have quite a few clothes in the UK. Um, but obviously, yes, I'm going to be traveling through basically fall. I'm going to have a bit of guess, hot weather in Vietnam and Cambodia and then into proper full on winter in the UK. We're going to be going to Scotland. We'll be in Northern Ireland. So it's going to be cold. So we have to have everything. And then going back to India again in February, it's going to be warm. So I'm trying to be fairly strict with myself in terms of the amount of clothing that I'm taking. Um, and actually, at the moment, my suitcase weighs about 15 kgs. So if I can keep it at that, that would be brilliant. 
I tend to find hand luggage is slightly more of an issue for me because I do have my laptop and then I've got, I'd have to take my Insta360 camera. I've got lots of tech stuff that I need to take for the websites and doing videos. So that 7kgs for carry on is soon filled. That's a, that's a huge issue. That's always my problem when we travel as well and traveling with kids as well. They all have iPads and devices and consoles and extra things. And we've all got laptops and (laughs) we end up with just all of these bags of cables and all of this tech. So, yeah, it definitely um, that's where the the difficult packing comes in, I think, when it comes to hand luggage. Um, So how are you planning on getting around all the different places? Are you taking internal flights? Are you going to be traveling by train? I'm sure Doug will be wanting to do lots of train travel. What are your plans for getting out? about well as huge advocates of uh, train travel yes we we will be taking lots of trains um so obviously there's lots of flights as well so we're obviously going to fly between the different countries however in japan we will be catching the train so we have got our rail pass japan rail pass ready so we'll get that sorted when we arrive in tokyo next week so yes mainly in japan we'll be via the train in seoul as well obviously um We'll just be using the, the transport itself, the local transport. But maybe we'll be taking a train down to Busan. We haven't quite decided that yet. But then when we arrive in Vietnam, we're actually, yes, we'll be taking a train. We are taking a train again from, um, we're going from Hanoi down to um, Da Nang. Yeah, so we're getting the train from Hanoi down to Da Nang, and then from there we'll fly from Da Nang down to Ho Chi Minh City. But then after that, to get over to Cambodia, we're taking a bus. So we'll be catching the bus and driving over to Phnom Penh. And then from Phnom Penh to Siem Reap, we've actually um, booked a private driver for that because I didn't. that's a very short plane trip. And I just thought, no, let's see a bit of the countryside. If I can, I'll avoid flying. I'm not a massive fan of flying, to be honest. So if I can drive and see things or sit on a, a train, ideally, you just can see more. You meet the local people. I just think it's far more fun. But then we'll be flying from Siem Reap to Bangkok. Again, sometimes when you've got tri- time constraints, even though we're away for a long time, the, the kind of time constraints to get get yourself to Bangkok for the 11th of December. So we fly into into Bangkok. Um, around the UK, we are planning to do trains, we're planning to take the ferry over to Dublin and then travel up to Belfast by train and then the boat over to Ken Ryan in Scotland and then back around by train, hopefully do the Caledonian sleeper, which we absolutely love. And then in India, um, it's going to be a combination of different transports, but um, there will be quite a few train journeys in that trip as well, which will be really exciting. So, yeah, lots of different ways of getting around. That sounds great. Now, I know that Doug has got some regular medication that he needs to take. How have you found that process of organising that? And is there anything you need to kind of be aware about or or think about when it comes to travelling to different countries? Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'm going to ask him to pop into the podcast and share that little bit of information because he's had to do all the research around that. And I know, you know, it's not because I I don't have to take any medication. So if it's something you don't have to do, you don't even consider it. But for Doug, it's been quite a massive um, thing to kind of sort out for this trip. Because I have to take regular medications. What I had to do was, first of all, find a lot about the medications I'm actually taking, uh, the proper names from where they're from, or actually where they're manufactured. And um, then I went onto the Smart Traveller website and went through every single country, their restrictions as to what is banned in each of these countries. And then some of them had to email and fill in various paperwork forms and submit. The secret of this is to do it in plenty of time before you... Uh, actually travel so touch wood everything seems to be in order um and we'll see how it actually manages on the day so i've got all that completed with the the paperwork from those but it's also the paperwork from this end if you like the from the doctors from the prescribing doctors as to what i'm taking how often and how many um all that sort of information but also stipulate that it's for personal use that's the critical part of this um, but it's about transparency and being open about everything you take. It's not a problem. Okay, well, um, we'll let people know how it, that went as well. That's right. We'll, we'll get some feedback on that, yeah. Okay, great. 
So at what point have you booked your accommodation? Have you got your tours and activities all locked in already or are you going to be booking as you travel? Uh, we've got all the accommodation is booked. Um, I always book that free cancellation because you never know, you might change your mind about what you're doing. And so while I've got everything kind of booked and locked in, there is some flexibility if I do need to change anything. We decide maybe we want to stay somewhere a little bit longer. And when it comes to activities, I've booked one or two things in Japan that I wanted to be sure about going to. Otherwise, um, and Halong Bay I've booked in Vietnam. But otherwise, we're going to kind of just go and see what appeals, I think. That's where we're at with that. I didn't feel too much of a stress that there were things I absolutely had to book, except to say uh, one or two things, the team labs that we're going to go to, the lights, lights exhibition um, that we're going to see in, in Tokyo and in Osaka. I did book those, but otherwise, no, we're just going to kind of wing it. <laughs> and I know like when you go to the UK there certainly are quite a few experiences that you do need to do your research about and book ahead so it's always good to, to figure out what it is that's important to you on the trip and anything that is really important get locked in um, so what are you looking forward to experiencing the most during your travels all of it does that sound crazy <laughs> but absolutely all of it I think it just have it I guess it's because Obviously, I love traveling. That's why I have a global travel planning podcast and we have the websites about travel. But there are so many destinations that I just have not had the opportunity yet to actually explore and visit. So the fact that I'm going to be able to actually visit some of the places that have meant so much to me my entire life in terms of I just want to go and experience them, that for me, just the privilege of being able to do that is going to be amazing. I'm also looking forward to what I'm expecting to be rather a large culture, culture shock in Japan. Um, so that that experience, taking myself out of my comfort zone, meeting people, talking to people, trying the local food, just being able to enrich my life through doing this travel because that's you know that's why I travel to go and enrich who I am to learn from other people and then hopefully when I come back from this actually bring some people on that I've met on the podcast and just talk about my experiences and share any ideas and travel tips and what I learned from this experience with the listeners that's kind of what I'm hoping to do. That sounds great and what would be your number one tip for planning a trip of this sort of length where you're going to be visiting multiple destinations? I think it's sitting down and deciding what where you actually want to go to start with because obviously there's so many places around the world you can choose to go. So it's once you've decided where it is you want to go and then it's deciding how long you want to go to that destination and then kind of work it from there. So that's what I did. We decided on the destinations. We decided how long in each destination and only at that point did I start looking at, okay, right, we've got the first flight to Tokyo we know that the next, the last flight we, we want to take to the UK is the 11th of December. So we've got that time in between. So let's work out how we're going to fill that. So I think it's just take your time, do your research and put it all together on a piece of paper or however, you know, you organize your plans and then just slowly start piecing it together. That sounds fantastic. Well, thanks so much, Tracy, for sharing all about your upcoming trip plans, because I know that you're really busy trying to get organised before you set off. Um, I can't wait to follow along on your social media. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, yes. I mean, this episode is going to actually come out rather bizarrely after we have arrived in the UK. Um, but I've kind of done that in, on purpose in a way, because this will be episode eight, is that episode nine, you can actually find out how the first three months of the trip have gone or the first maybe seven weeks of the trip have gone so from Japan to arrive in London we're going to talk about that in episode nine of the global travel travel planning podcast you'll be able to find out exactly how the trip panned out so we're just going to do kind of an overview of how we found that sort of you know October the 19th to December the 11th bit of the trip and report back on that in episode nine. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fascinating tips to share and a lot of learning experiences to tell us about. Uh, yes, well, I'm looking forward to, I'm actually, I, in some ways I'm looking forward to doing it, but I'm not because I know that I'll be halfway through my trip by the time I get to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will miss you in Brisbane anyway while you're gone. Uh, well, yes, yeah, thank you. Well, 
uh, I have to say, Karen, thank you so much for agreeing to come on and actually interview me for this week's episode. Because I was thinking, you know what, I need to share our travel plans with everybody. But uh, rather than me just ramble on it, which I may have just rambled on, I don't know. But it would be really good to have somebody ask me the questions. So thank you so much, Karen, for coming on again. Another episode. We were on episode uh, seven two weeks ago. So thanks very much for coming on to this episode. You're welcome. It's always good fun being on a podcast with you. Oh, thank you. You can find the show notes for this week's episode at tracystravelsintime.com forward slash episode eight. That just leaves Karen and I to say until the next episode of the Global Travel Planning Podcast. Happy, Happy global, global Travel Planning. planning. <laughs> <laughs>